The next session is a fireside chat moderated by James Lloyd, Asia Pacific FinTech and Payments Leader at EY Pantheon. He'll be joined by Javier Perez Tasso, Chief Executive Officer of SWIFT, to talk about how corporate payments are being reinvented. Let's go over to them now. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, uh, my name is James Lloyd. I'm a strategy and transactions partner at EY Parthenon, while also serving as EY's fintech and payments leader for Asia Pacific. Yeah, I myself am joining from our home office in Hong Kong. Uh, as I mentioned to Javier before we started, uh, I have four young children, so one or more of them may run into the room at any moment, and if they do, uh, please do not be alarmed. I am delighted to be back again participating in the Singapore FinTech Festival and especially pleased to get a chance to speak to Javier Perez Tazo, the CEO of SWIFT. Now, of course, many of you will know SWIFT as the global member-owned cooperative uh, and indeed the world's leading provider of secure financial messaging services. Um, and we're going to get into a lot of that in detail. Now, before I ask Javier to introduce himself, uh, some mild disclosures. Uh, in my uh, former startup days, I did indeed participate in the Swift InnoTribe Startup Challenge, uh, found it to be very useful. We returned to Swift uh, Cybos as a growth stage innovator. And really for the past number of years, I have been hosting the uh, flagship InnoTribe Future of Money session at Cybos. So, so that is my disclosure from the outset, uh, and also the fact that I probably know uh, Swift a little better than the average uh, man or woman on the street, um, but I still feel there's a huge amount of content that we're going to get through to today. So, uh, Javier, uh, allowing for the fact that perhaps there is a, uh, a varying degree of knowledge uh, amongst our audience as to what Swift does, can I please ask you to introduce yourself and indeed the business uh, that you are running today? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, James. And uh, yes, uh, they say good morning, good, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I am as well uh, uh, working from home at the moment, uh, the other side of the world, uh, where, as you know, we're based in Brussels. So I am in my, my home place in Brussels. My kids, fortunately, now schools are open are at school, so I will not be disturbed from that front. <laughs> but um, so now um, getting to the content, of course. Uh, I mean, you are you are more of an more than an initiator. You've been witnessing uh, the uh, the innovation agenda that Swift has been into over the past few years, uh, being part of Inno Tribe at, uh, from the outset. Uh, Swift obviously started a bit earlier than that. Uh, uh, its history it was created some forty five years ago in the seventies uh, by a certain number of banks uh, in a few countries. Uh, with which one objective? It was to automate the telex. It was to uh, uh, standardize the way uh, international trade, FX, and cross-border payments through correspondent banking uh, had to be done in an in a industrial way and an efficient and secure way. Um, so that was the essence of uh, the creation of SWIFT. Uh, fast forward 47 years now, uh, we are now present in more than 200 uh, countries uh, with more than uh, 12,000 users. Um, mostly uh, financial institutions, but not only financial institutions. Um, and uh, indeed, not all, the essence of what was created, what SWIFT was created around uh, the automation of, uh, of uh, international trade effects and, and payments still there, still remains the uh, I mean, the ma major core business of SWIFT, but not the only one. We have since then also automated uh, the whole post-trade uh, settlement activities in the security space. Uh, and expanded into areas that go beyond interbank, also at the domestic level with uh, automation of uh, uh, market infrastructures, corporates and beyond. So, so a complete new company in that sense, the same kind of uh, um, essence being a cooperative industry owned. I think that has that is very important in, in the characteristic of SWIFT. We'll get into that later. Yep. I firmly believe that being industry owned is is essential in the non-competitive space uh, of, uh, of, the, of the industry. Um, but, but of course, under the cover, there is a huge amount of innovation as you've witnessed uh, uh, in your presence in Inno Tribe and beyond, a lot of renewal of technology, adoption of new technologies, new business models, uh, and that's what, like any other company, we've been sure. 
No, and look, we'll, we'll, we'll get into a couple of those topics, Javier, for sure. I mean, I think the, the, the member-owned cooperative business model is something I definitely want to uh, deep dive into. I think, you know, fascinating um, in terms of structure, governance, and so on. I think we'll talk a little bit about uh, the innovation side and perhaps some of the new products. And, 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 and you mentioned users, some, you know, new users being onboarded, et cetera. But before then, I actually think when, when last we spoke, you had a really good way of um, kind of just structuring the, the conversation a little bit. I mean, it's very consulting 101, so forgive me, but the, the two by two matrix, you know, mentioned if we think about kind of payments infrastructure globally, um, and I'm not taking credit for this, by the way, this was Javier's uh, suggestion when last we spoke, but you know, you have some institutions that are focused on domestic, you have some that are focused on cross border, of course, uh, some players in the ecosystem are focused on the, the kind of front end, servicing the customer, be it consumers, SMEs, corporates, and then some are more on the back end infrastructure. Um, and I guess, you know, as a way of framing the discussion, I found that to be quite useful because Swift certainly historically has been focused on providing, let's call it the kind of back end, the infrastructure cross border. Um, but I think in recent years, it's true to say that you've also begun building some of the domestic infrastructure as well. Um, I'm thinking new payments platform in Australia as one example, I know there are others. So can you, as we think about that kind of market framing, um, how do you see SWIFT progressing in the coming years? You know, clearly cross-border infrastructure is, 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 is the core proposition, but you're doing more in domestic. Will you be doing more on the consumer front end as well? Uh, I'm thinking about, you know, typically this has been large transaction value, but I believe you're kind of, you know, progressing into smaller and so on and so forth. So maybe just a little bit about how you see the market and how you see Swift's role within it. Yeah, yeah, no, indeed. I mean, you and I discussed the other day about it. It's it's one one. Um, I mean, there's not obviously any any particular way or better way to define uh, the marketplace, but it's true that at the higher level. It is very simplistic, but it does um, uh, at least uh, frame the discussion. Having this, you know, two by two on domestic cross border um, and front end back end, um, there are many players present in one or several of these four boxes. Um, and uh, and then you take a step back. Of course, you see uh, in the, the side of the world you live in, uh, big tech players. The the, the uh, of course the the uh, and group tens and yeah and that are getting into into the the you know the, the the international payment space well domestic to start with and then going further uh, so these and these big tech players are not only uh, there of course you have the gafas the google amazon uh, facebook and apples and and others uh, you have uh, uh, new entrants that are leveraging the pro competition regulation all over the world uh, in europe it started off with psd2 and uh, leveraging open banking further afield. Uh, you have the, the, the big uh, card players, of course, uh, Visa MasterCard that are also uh, expanding, uh, and rightly so, into new transaction services businesses um, and leveraging their, their, their assets a little bit in each of these boxes. Um, and so there is, a, there is, and then of course you have uh, new technologies like DLT and, and, uh, and, uh, and players that are CBDC. leveraging. Central bank issued digital currencies, sure. Which is typical, which is definitely a, an area now of focus, as you saw with uh, the recent uh, work of um, FSB with CPMI. Uh, one of the options that they're envisaging to improve um, cross border payments is, our, is potential use of, uh, of CBDC. So, with all of that in play, um, it's true that this framework, simple, very simple framework, um, uh, sets at least the context, and, and we do play SWIFT. I, I firmly believe that to create, um, uh, a, I mean, one of the objectives of uh, FSB, or well, the objective of the G20 with that work that uh, was uh, uh, given to the FSB and, and, uh, and CPMI was to make international payments or end-to-end -end payments uh, faster, cheaper, more transparent, more inclusive uh, across the world. Um, and um, and to do that, I think it is essential to get the fundamentals right, to get the foundations right. And at the domestic regional level, there's been a huge amount of great work done by uh, uh, public sector with uh, infrastructures, domestic infrastructures, uh, uh, 
uh, retail payment systems, wholesale payment systems, RTGSs, ACHs, uh, uh, real-time payment systems, you mentioned Australia, um, where SWIFT is playing a role in some, not in others, but indeed this, this is uh, an area where we've expanded. And then there is the international, uh, which is essentially interconnecting all of these payment systems, all of this great work being done at the domestic or regional level, make sure that the whole uh, world benefits uh, from an international infrastructure. And that is where the international backend, uh, uh, that's where SWIFT, uh, I mean, is the essence of a cooperative, industry on cooperative, where not only in terms of technology, we manage to interconnect these payment systems in a, you know, instant way, which yep. is part of our region, make this instant, uh, internationally, but also take the friction out of the system, uh, friction in terms of uh, all the barriers that uh, FSB, uh, CPMI, by the way, have identified as well, uh, that go beyond uh, I mean, all sorts, uh, currency controls, AML, and, uh, and so forth, but yep. also having all the controls in play, all the controls that cannot be overcome. We shouldn't cut corners in terms of, uh, of the backend infrastructure. Uh, that's where uh, of course, the focus on security, the focus yep. on fraud detection capabilities are crucial. Uh, compliance around KYC, ML, and, and sanctions. Uh, and at the end of the day, being uh, governed, being overseen by, uh, in our case, the G20 is, is crucial. So it's where this area of backend needs to be highly regulated and overseen. And and, and let me and let me come on to that now. So thank you, Javier. And maybe just for for our viewers, I mean, I think you're referring to Financial Stability Board there, the Bank for International Settlements. I mean, there's been a number of you know very interesting reports and analyses done on this topic. Um, you know, CBDC or central bank issued digital currencies is is one pretty hot topic right now, particularly in this part of the world with PBOC, etc. But in Europe with the Swedish central bank, etc. But but as you rightly say, I mean, it, for the most part, CBDCs are a domestic um, you know, an additional payment rail effectively domestically. So a lot of the SWIFT focus remains that international and um, it's really kind of joining up or, or providing that interconnectivity. And maybe I should say actually in, in, in kind of honor of our Singaporean hosts that um, the Monetary Authority of Singapore just, just actually announced uh, the opening up of their uh, FAST network, um, which is their immediate payments platform, uh, I believe in February of next year to non-bank financial institutions. So another great example of a domestic immediate payments platform, innovation happening at the domestic level, in that case, driven by the regulator and, and market participants. But again, SWIFT's kind of primary role or, 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 or kind of largest role to some degree seems to be interconnecting a lot of those uh, international uh, or, or interconnecting those domestic systems. But you mentioned, and I think a really uh, interesting topic is around kind of governance. Um, <clears throat> I guess in particular, you know, when I think of, you mentioned Visa, MasterCard, you know, whether it's Ant Group or perhaps Facebook's Libra and so on and so forth. I mean, some of these um, players are seeking to operate at different points of that kind of uh, two by two matrix. But if I think of some of the other big networks, maybe Visa Master in particular, you know, it's interesting. Both of course were organized as cooperatives themselves in the first instance, and that is kind of owned by their member banks uh, before going public in, in kind of recent history. We've seen the, um, the, uh, the market cap, market capitalization of each kind of grow significantly since. If I think about Libra Association, which I think is being renamed DM and, and so on and so forth, there's a lot of discussion around infrastructure, but then I for me, a big question is around ownership and governance. So, you know, SWIFT is, as I said from the outset, you know, a member-owned cooperative. How important is that governance structure for SWIFT's mission? Uh, and how do you see, um, you know, can a, can a member cooperative compete with the likes of a Visa Master in terms of kind of speed, innovation, commitment? Uh, and then likewise, what are some of the benefits, if you like, of, of the kind of cooperative model? Yeah. Sorry, a big question, um, by the way, Javier. Sorry, that's probably well, a no, pretty, no, pretty big. Uh, uh, no, but it's, a, it's, a, it's relevant. Um, uh, so so I, I'm, I'm firmly, well, listen, I've been at SWIFT for 25 years, so kind of I'm probably biased there. Uh, but I'm, um, uh, and of course, I'm the CEO now, so I should be. Um, uh, but I, I firmly believe that uh, I'm trying really to take abstraction of the role I have, that 
this uh, the, there is a very important role, uh, or if not a, a fundamental role in the uh, backend infrastructure for industry-owned players, for indus for players that are, uh, of course, as competitive, and they need to be agile, they need to be uh, innovative, they need to uh, bring new technologies in and. Uh, be second to none in terms of uh, customer service. Um, but uh, the fact that they are industry owned and that they are overseen, like it is in our case by digital, digital central banks, uh, is, is a, 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 a fundamental foundation for um, to create an efficient and, uh, and solid, robust in, uh, payments ecosystem across borders. So. I do think in that matrix of the back end, front end, uh, where a huge amount of innovation and um, economics are being played out is in the front end. That's where the customer channels are yep. playing out. That's where innovation for fintechs is coming in. Uh, again, leveraging P uh, open banking, PSD2 in Europe. Um, and uh, you see a salami slicing of the value chain uh, end to end. So they are you know, between banks and its customers, whether they are SMEs or, or corporates, they are uh, a new uh, whole host of players that are intermediating themselves. Um, and, and this innovation is, is indeed creating this pro-competition regulation, and it is uh, improving uh, uh, the value at the end for the end consumer. But this innovation needs to have a foundation, needs to have a foundation that uh, does, as I said, doesn't cut corners, that meets all the controls in terms of uh, cyber, in terms of uh, uh, financial crime compliance, uh, and and that's where I think there is. I'm convinced there is a role for an innovative industry-owned uh, cooperative like Swift to power that innovation, to make sure that these domestic regional infrastructures are interconnected and mm -hmm. are interoperable. They use market practice standards rules uh, that make the end-to-end -end, uh, transaction chain instant and frictionless. We're talking, as far as Swift is concerned, about interconnecting 4 billion accounts in an instant. Mm. That's what we're now starting with already with GPI Instant. And within the next two years, with our new transaction management platform, it will be a reality. Uh, and with that, we expose all that uh, information through APIs to our banking users, our financial institution uh, uh, users. And uh, they, they will not only offer that to consumers, but they will offer value added service in terms of providing uh, what, again, uh, the FSB and CPMI are looking for, which is um, uh, more transparency, inclusiveness, yep. uh, and, uh, and fast and cheaper payments. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, it's it's an interesting one because, of course, in this part of the world, especially, we've seen tremendous kind of domestic innovation in, in mainland China, India with UPI, et cetera. But then a lot of it, you know, there's a lot of talk these days, whether political or otherwise, about decoupling, about a kind of a slowdown of globalization, et cetera. But, but in very practical terms, that's not the case. I mean, people are transacting cross-border more than ever. Um, and and we see uh, we we see no let up of that in the in the coming years. So you know again, kind of a tremendous infrastructure layer required to to sustain that uh, in a robust and, and, and efficient manner. So I, I, Javier, we a, a lot that I wanted to get into, and of course, as always, we're kind of running out of time a little bit. So um, let me pass it over to you in terms of. Uh, trends that you're seeing in terms of what's next for Swift, you know, how should how should we uh, and and you know attendees at the Singapore Festival, uh, fintech festival, think about Swift over the next kind of two, five, ten years? Where where, where do you see the kind of big vision? Indeed, we have just uh, our new strategy approved uh, by the board, uh, well communicated in the community. I I do think it is it, it it's going to be you know a big evolution to what we've done up to now, and I mentioned evolution even if. Uh, it is probably perceived as well as a transformation because at the end of the day, uh, what we're going to do is take GPI to the next level and to make uh, actually cross-border payments across 4 billion accounts, uh, truly instant and frictionless uh, at the back end. So leveraging infrastructure at the domestic level, always use, always going through the banks, that will be obviously the entry point, the anchor uh, players into domestic uh, platforms and get that foundation right with all the controls with uh, oversight uh, and uh, uh, controls around uh, cyber, 
uh, KYC, AML um, sanctions that are fundamental, and of course, in terms of resilience and availability of services, to provide a more robust uh, and effective uh, financial ecosystem. So that is what we, we will be working with the community. We'll be co-creating, co-designing elements of this uh, platform. We have a new agile way of working at Swift as well. Um, and, uh, and I do expect uh, many of our customers to uh, you know, be early adopters of it uh, over the next uh, two years uh, and start working also on the front end, what you were discussing on the metrics, front end solutions, remittance offerings, uh, at the front end to their end customers uh, themselves or in partnerships with fintechs, uh, leveraging that platform that is at the end of the day uh, industry owned. Excellent. Well, I look forward to hearing more about that. And uh, Javier, until we next meet in person, thank you for your time. And thanks to everyone for participating in the Singapore FinTech Festival. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Bye. Keep walking, stay connected. We can never plan for the unexpected like COVID, but we should keep walking and marching towards the right directional, following our dream, our vision. Ultimately, man can propose, but God disposes. So how to maintain and further our connectivity are vital for us to stay competitive and stay in the game. In my eyes, as a leader, especially as a FinTech leader, must be someone to be able to embrace and appreciate Fin plus tech. Support lifelong learning and upskilling for the team to include different age group, different gender, different career stage, and with such creativity and openness to imagine beyond Fin and beyond tech, to have extraordinary ideas, practical ones, to disrupt the status quo and with the mission and commitment to contributing to the societies. Thanks to James and Javier. That was an insightful look into what's needed to reinvent corporate payments. Thank you.